I make a confession right now. I am tipsy. Hey guys! Welcome to Chit Chat and Wine with Chardonnay Day and Cabernella. Let's pop bottles. Ready? <laughs> and Thank you all so much for tuning in into this week's episode. If you are returning, welcome back. If you are new, make sure you catch our last episode. And we are so happy to have you here. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. It really helps support our channel. Yes, guys, we drop a new episode every single Wednesday, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a wind down of Wednesday with Chardonnay Day and Cabernella. Now let's get into the video. So this week we are talking about this wine, Clos du Bois. As wine experts, that is how you pronounce it. Just kidding. This is something, a wine you can get pretty much at every major retailer. Uh, Walmart, Target, Walgreens. Anywhere you sell or can find wine, you pretty much can find this. It's a California wine. And they actually have a cool little marketing thing themselves. So um, in the description below, we will leave the link to their website and you can yeah. check them out. Um, I am drinking the Cabernet, so a little bit about this Claude Dubois Cabernet. It is a vintage from 2020. Alcohol content is a 13.5%. It is full bodied. The notes are black currant, blackberry, toasted oak, and this wine pairs really well with grilled meats and vegetables. And um, we decided that we wanted to talk about some reviews, not only our opinion, but what other people are saying about the wine. So we're gonna use Total Wines to kind of give you a uh, people rating of the wine and um, what they're scoring it. So on Total Wines, this Cabernet is a 4.5 out of five stars. And here are uh, what some people had to say. So Ben's Classic said that this is a smooth Cabernet. Good full body red, smooth with an easy finish. Mm, that's what you like. So Chris from Annapolis said, you can always count on you. You again delivered before you schedule time. I am so grateful and the wine is definitely better than the price suggested. Thank you for deliveries in Annapolis. I'm guessing that must be a five star for <laughs> and Eliza Quilt said this wine is passable. A passable wine for the price, but I found it to be a smoky finish. Hmm. What are you sipping on, Chardonnay? Nay? So I am drinking the Chardonnay of Claude Dubois. That's my French way of saying it. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Um, it's a Chardonnay, it's a medium body. It's a vintage, it's from 2018, pre-COVID, 13.5, love that. The notes on it are apple blossom, oak, and ripe pear, plus citrus. And it's supposed to pair very well with chicken, fish, or creamy pasta. And people are giving it a 4.5 on Total Wines, and I'm gonna share with you the reviews that I found on, um, on the website. All right, so, High value, cost effective, exceptional Chardonnay. Excellent fruity Chardonnay and they recommend this product and they gave it a four. Next review says, great standard, not too oaky, bit of butter. Highly recommends this product. Five star review, one of my favorites for a long time. This Chardonnay is butter with a hint of oak and would definitely recommend. And these are verified buyers from Total Wines. All right, girl, let's try it. And guys, how fun is this? Flamingo wine glasses. We told you she has an obsession with flamingos. Cheers, girl. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I give it a thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up too. I definitely can see myself repeating this one. Um, out of a scale of one to 10 from all the wines I've ever drank, I'm gonna give this one a solid 
eighth. Like the way I feel about it is, it matches the description per perfectly. It definitely can taste the blackberry. Um, it doesn't really have that smoky of a finish that um, someone mentioned on the thing, so I'm not really getting that. But what I really love about it, it is full body and it is not too sweet because I hate when I get a Cabernet and it's like, you can really taste the sugar. So I'm liking this nice little clean finish. I can drink this all night. I'm drinking this all night. What do you think, girl? I think that the reviews that I read were spot on. It does have like a light buttery taste and I do taste the oak. And I give it an 8.5 because it is very refreshing and it is, it does have a smooth ending, but you definitely taste the notes of the citrus. Um, I don't have fresh creamy pasta or fish to go with it. I have some mozzarella, tomatoes, and basil, and cucumbers. Um, but it, we live in Florida, and this is a very refreshing wine. It's not that heavy. I totally recommend it. I'm gonna go write my review. Where do we get ours from? Walgreens. Today we got it from Walgreens. Say hello to our little friends. This is Cat Dog Cole. As you can see, I'm gonna let him go and he's gonna go right back to the back of the couch. My baby. Huh. And this is Glizzy. Glizzy Rosario. He has his own Instagram. Follow him at uh, <laughs> Glizzy underscore boo. Y'all better follow my baby Glizzy <laughs> Cuckoo. I was thinking, if you can travel anywhere mm -hmm. in time what year era would you travel back to oh uh, well i don't really watch tv but recently my mom has introduced me to this show called the first kingdom it takes place in like i don't know the medieval days I don't, the vikings right it's all about the vikings and i'm obsessed <laughs> I wouldn't want to live during that time, but I would so, so, so love to be a fly on the wall, but I need toilet paper and air conditioning, so I couldn't go live there. <laughs> but I'm like fascinated by that. What about you? Well, I've been watching Russian Doll, and it's on Netflix, and it's about a girl that just turns 36, and she's been fearing it because I guess her mom passed away when she was 36. But she wakes up, revive, and after, well, the day of her birthday, she gets into an accident, she passes away, and she wakes up every single day through the same day. She experiences the same day every day. She's in a time loop. Like a groundhog's day. Yeah, she's, she's in a time loop. She's doing this, she's repeating the same thing over and over. It's pretty interesting, but the second season is where she goes back into time, okay. and they show more of the time travel where she goes back into the 80s, and but she goes back as her mom, which was even freakier. But um, her co, <laughs> or the, the person that's, you know, her co-character uh, or whatever, co her co-star, goes back into time when they were uh, with the Berlin Wall, and he goes back as his grandmother. That's weird. I know, but it's called Russian Doll, and if, if I could go back, I would go back to the 80s. 80s. Yeah. That could be cool. You know, we're getting Michael Jackson in his prime time. A lot of good and it's black music. time. Yeah, when it was black, Michael Jackson. But there's a lot of good music, and I don't know that much. I was born in '83, so I'm assuming that that was a fantastic year. <laughs> you know, great things come from the '80s. You're yes. born in the '80s too. I was born in the '80s. That's why I would love to go back to the time before I was born, just so I can see. I want to feel my parents and see how their teenage yeah. years were and how, what do you, you know? What do you think it was like? <laughs> well, what do you think it was like? Let's just, let me like, let's paint a picture, okay? We're in the 80s. You have landlines, so if you want to make a phone call to someone, you can't walk away from the wall. Uh, pay phones. VCH, VHS, cassette tapes. <laughs> They, I think that, yeah, VHS. High top Reeboks. High top Reeboks. <laughs> well, for me, it was different, Courtney, because I was in the Dominican Republic and my parents were in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. My mom didn't come to the United States until after I was born. Yeah. So. That's very true. What, what, do you, what do you think it was like over there in the 80s? 
Well, my parents lived very, well, my mom, because my dad was here in, in America, and I think he was like going around, but anyway, that's another story. And um, my, um, my, we lived, we didn't even have like electricity. We did have electricity, but it went out all the time, so it wasn't stable. And same thing with the water. We had chickens, we had, you know, farm animals. Um, yeah, we did not live like, do you have a TV? We did not have a TV until, I think right before we came to the Dominican, right till we came to the United America. States. I mean, my father did um, send money over there, so the money went a long way. So out of everybody in the hood, I was like, Filling with coins. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> the most like, the hood. yeah, my mom gave birth in a clinic, which is like high end in the Dominican Republic. So she did give birth in a very high end place. And I was very well dressed. And uh, my mom said that I was bougie as a little child. I like, don't believe that. <laughs> Tracy's very particular about things, so that makes sense. I was like a complete tomboy. I was born here in Florida, but when um, I was about three, we lived in Kentucky for a short time. And one thing I remember about my childhood, like the early days, Rainbow Bright, Care Bears, and I remember you oh, didn't even have a, we didn't even have a remote control for the TV. You had to walk up and like turn the knob, and uh, we were roughing it. Okay, kids. <laughs> Some of you are old enough to drink, but do not remember not having a remote control for a TV. <laughs> right or a cell phone. Yeah, like I used to call my mom on a collect from a payphone and be like, I'm over at my friend's house. I'm gonna be home later. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> I think that you know. Technology is great, yeah. but it's also changing culture, you know? So we know a time where there wasn't any cell phones, but there's kids now that don't know that. They don't know yeah. that. It was, I'm so thankful I did not grow up with social media. I was complete hot mess in my teenage years. I was good, mostly. Cheers to that, girl. Cheers to that. But I am so thankful nothing was caught on film that I'd have to look up and be like, oh yeah, I did that. And when we were young, we were crazy. <laughs> so crazy, guys. Drop in the comments below what year you grew up or what were some of the things that you remember from your childhood. I'm interested to hear from you guys about what you experienced. What lessons have you learned since like in your 20s, you know, all the way till now? The biggest thing you'll ever learn, regardless of your relationship with your elders in your life, your parents, is that you don't know what they know. You don't learn how to appreciate your parents until you're older and those bills start coming with your name on them mm. and you realize the water isn't free and the electricity oh. bill is not free. I mean, I remember when I moved out and went to college, me and my friends got a, an apartment together and our power got shut off and we were like, what, what happened? And the guy was like, Hello, dum dums. Did you turn oh. the electric on in your name? And we were like, "What is that? What is it? Oh. What?" I called my mom. I was like, "You did not tell me about bills." <laughs> that is too funny. It's it's one of the biggest lessons that I learned aside from bills and being responsible and just using my money towards them instead of going shopping, which was kind of hard for me, was having the right friends by your side. I feel like one lesson I learned was I kept the wrong people in my life and then I lost valuable people. And to this day, I think about that. And um, you know, now that I'm older, I appreciate the right people yeah. in my life. Like Courtney, like you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking through all stages of life. I'm talking yeah. about through, you know, especially high school, which is where we really start going out there right before. Around high, when did you first start drinking high, um, wine? Was it in high school? Well, funny enough, I did drink Arbor Mist in high school, which is basically grape juice to me now. I can't even <laughs> think about that right Courtney, now. Courtney, when you last tried it, what did you say it tasted like? Let me tell you something, Tracy. And I hope no one can hold this against me. But I got drunk off Arbor Mist when I was in high school, and it threw up. How much did you drink? I don't even know. I can't really remember that night. It was wild. Let's just say this. I'm glad I didn't have to drive anywhere. I'm very thankful that I was able to crash at my friend's house that night. And uh, yeah, that was my first time drinking wine. Oh my God. <laughs>
My first time drinking wine, I was probably about 13 years, 12, 13 years old. My dad does DJ, he DJs, so he does a lot of parties. And of course, I'm nosy, and of course I want to drink. And um, White Zinfandel was what, what oh, I first started yeah. with. White Zinfandel was, I think I was a little older. When, um, when I was in college, I didn't really drink too much wine. I uh, was partying hard, and then, um, when I started, ha well, with Antoine and I got together, that's when we started drinking wine together. And what's funny is we started off with very sweet wines. Our, our first wine that we purchased together, I'll never forget, I don't even know how. How funny, it. right? I remember this, but it was called Oliver. What? Yes, and we thought that was the best wine ever. Is it's, it red? It is a red, but it's a sweet table like a red. Dessert, like a dessert? Let wine. me tell you something. I purchased this wine again. We saw it somewhere like, it's been a handful of years back now, but I saw it in the store and I was like, oh my God, that was our first wine. So I got us like, it's my look. Oh. And we tried it and I was like, ah! <laughs> my I can't drink What the hell? That's crazy, right, how your palate, like I can't drink whites with Fidel right now. I can't. You can't I can drink, drink. I can drink whites that are a little, I don't know what it is. I think because you serve them cold, it just hits different. But I can't drink anything sugary sweet. I can do white Zinfandel. It's too sweet for me, white Zinfandel. But I can do that. I, I can't can do Moscato at all. No, 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 no. That's and you know what? Sweet. If you've if you're if you've ever heard of muscadine grapes, big fat no thank you for me. Those are so sickly sweet, sickly sweet. When I was in Arkansas, I tried that. We went to a vineyard. I got on that muscadine and I was like, hey, I'm gonna get it. No. It was so sickly sweet. If you like muscadine wine, let us know in the comments below. I've never tried it, so. Not good. Have you had uh, port wine? Um, I don't know. I think I'm never gonna try, I think we're gonna do an episode of port wine. One yeah. Day. We have a lot of episodes we wanna bring to you guys. We love chit chatting, we love talking a little bit about ourselves. Um, and we want to hear from you, so leave us some comments below. What wine do you like to drink? Because we want to know. Yes. What wine do you recommend we try next? Because we want to try it. Because we want to try it. And what are some topics that would be fun you guys want to hear our opinions about? Because we are ready to tell it. Yes. I'm ready to answer whatever questions you guys have. Um, so if you haven't subscribed already, we hope we kept you here long enough to do so. Um, it means the world to us. Um, to all our friends and family, thank you. Thanks guys, and don't forget to hit that like button. If you wanna learn more about how you can support our channel or you wanna connect with us, all of that will be in the comment section below. Until next Wind Down Wednesday, everybody. Cheers! Cheers.